Well, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. Now for another special water episode, as the situation in the western U.S. continues to get worse, the only direction that we all knew it was going to go. As always, PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me or help me out. Only do so if you actually can, obviously. So... The western uh, one-third, 40% or so of the U.S. is in an extremely harsh drought, and it is uh, continuing to be so. It's not stopping, so we're going to have a look at a wide variety of water levels, reservoirs, lakes, rivers, starting with Lake Mead. Water source not only for the 3 million people of the Las Vegas area and uh, several hundred thousand other people in the surrounding area, but also semi, not so secretly, the water supply for much of Southern California, particularly the uh, 19 million people of the Los Angeles area, as a huge portion of Southern California's water is pumped hundreds of miles through a pipeline system from two smaller reservoirs down on the Arizona-California border which are downriver from Lake Mead, and Lake Mead has uh, been constantly having to release extra water to uh, flow downstream or downriver to make sure that uh, those reservoirs down there stay at a desirable level to feed the Colorado River Aqueduct pipeline system. So that has been dropping Lake Mead's water level extra fast on top of uh, the long-term drop it was already going down and has also been bringing down Lake Powell, which is further upriver from Lake Mead, as Lake Powell keeps uh, releasing extra water downriver to try to keep Lake Mead from dropping too fast. But it ultimately isn't really stopping it, because Lake Mead is still dropping too fast anyways. So Lake Mead, like most of the reservoirs and lakes in the U.S., is measured by elevation feet to water level. So the number isn't uh, the current depth of the lake, it's how high the surface of the water is above sea level presently. A couple decades ago, when Lake Mead was still able to uh, be full, its full level is at about 1,229 elevation feet, and an empty Lake Mead would be at about uh, 915 elevation feet. However, However, keep in mind that uh, it's a flooded canyon, as most of them are, so it gets narrower and narrower the further down you go. So each foot of water level further down you go contains volumetrically less water than the foot above it did. So even though by the numbers, as you're going to see, uh, might make it seem like Lake Mead has only lost about a third or 40% of its water, it's actually lost closer to 60%, but as the numbers go themselves, uh, when we last talked about water uh, about a month ago or so, Lake Mead was down to about 1,074, 1,075 elevation feet of water level. Now it's uh, dropped all the way down to only about 1,070 after going through its annual refill season, and as per usual, not regaining as much as it lost the previous year, as has been the, uh, the normal pattern for the last two or two and a half decades or so. As last year, it lost about 14 elevation feet of water level, and during its annual recharge season uh, between last year and this year, it, o it only managed to regain five of those lost 14 feet, and since its recharge or refill season ended, it's now lost 16 feet of water level already this year and mentioned along with it, as I said, Lake Powell, further up river from it, is constantly releasing extra water to make sure Lake Mead doesn't drop too fast, even though Lake Mead is still dropping too fast, even with Lake Powell doing that. A full Lake Powell, uh, back when such a thing could be, would be at about 3,700 elevation feet. An empty Lake Powell would be down at about 3,142, However, again, it's a flooded canyon, so it gets narrower and narrower the further down you go. So despite the numbers uh, making it seem like it's not even halfway down yet, it's actually uh, kind of in the same position as Lake Mead. This year so far, uh, Lake Powell has already lost about 20 or 19 elevation feet of water level, and this right now is actually the uh, time frame of its recharge season. On that, normally it would regain anywhere between 10 and 40 elevation feet of water level. However, it's a decent way through its recharge season already, and it has only regained 
one foot of elevation water level, having dropped uh, from about 3,580 elevation feet at the start of the year down to 3,560 and only having regained that one foot up to 3,561. Down in Arizona, uh, Phoenix, where basically most of the population is, something like five and a half million people living literally in the middle of a desert. Phoenix is supplied by a number of surrounding reservoirs, and uh, they're measured, uh, and they're measured in their collective percentage of uh, how full they are put together. And last time we mentioned them in the uh, prior water video, they were at about a collective 74% full. Uh, since then, they've dropped 6% down to only about 68% full collectively. Compared to the same time last year, uh, they were way up at 94%. Now over in California itself, the state that is in itself a problem for a number of reasons. See a specific video about that, I'll link below and on screen. A small part of Southern California's water does also come uh, from the Owens River, but not that much. And even so, the Owens River isn't uh, doing all that great in terms of water supply at the moment. It's normally full up and flowing at a leisurely 230 cubic feet per second. However, as of present, it is uh, much lower and only flowing at a shrunken lethargic 75 cubic feet per second. Making your way up through California, you start entering the region fed by the San Joaquin River, which is normally, at this time of year at least, uh, flowing at about 500 cubic feet per second. However, as of present, it is all the way down at only about 100 cubic feet per second. And heading up further north, once you get to the uh, Sacramento area, that is uh, supplied primarily by two rivers, the Sacramento River, which is also normally flowing at about 500 cubic feet per second, at least at this time of year. However, uh, presently is only at about 200 cubic feet per second. And far up river, it is fed via the uh, via the Lake Shasta Reservoir, which is uh, not doing all that great and is plunging rather rapidly, uh, just like the others. So far, Lake Shasta this year has dropped by about 33 elevation feet of water level, dropping from 980 down to 947 after having regained about 20 feet of elevation water level during its recharge season. And Lake Shasta's uh, full level would be at about 1,067 elevation feet, and empty Lake Shasta would be down at about 549. However, again, the water levels as lost so far are not a mere uh, 20 or 15 percent or so. They're actually significantly greater than that. Again, because of the flooded canyon, flooded valley narrowing effect. Also for the Sacramento area is the American River which normally at present uh, this time of year would be at about 3,000 cubic feet per second however is only flowing at about 1,800 cubic feet per second and is fed from uh, further up the river the Folsom Lake Reservoir and Folsom Lake uh, just completed its recharge season in which it uh, regained about 20 feet of water level normally uh, it would regain about 40 or so and uh, and in a brief period of time, uh, just the last number of days, it has already plunged by about 10 very rapidly from 400 down to 390. A full Folsom Lake Reservoir would be at about 466 elevation feet. Empty would be at about 216. But once again, uh, the narrowing canyon effect. And the San Francisco Bay Area is supplied uh, from a distance by the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir which when full would be at about 3,806 elevation feet of water level, empty would be at about 3,500. But again, blah, 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 narrowing uh, the further down you go. Hetch Hetchy Reservoir normally does better. Uh, it normally refills to full every annual recharge season it goes through. However, this time it did not actually make it as normally it uh, drops down to about 3,740, 3,750 uh, during its drawdown season. However, uh, this past year, it almost went all the way down to 3,700 itself. So Hetch Hetchy only made it back up to about falling, falling about 20 feet short of its usual complete 
refill and the crippling drought effects uh, actually extend up into the northwestern states as well. The Willamette River in Oregon is uh, percentage measured and and as of present is 23% below its usual capacity. And then the Washington-Oregon uh, Dividing Line River, the Columbia River, is a pretty huge river in terms of uh, water content, water volume. Uh, normally, it's flowing anywhere between 30 and 35,000 cubic feet per second, at least at the Portland, Oregon, or Vancouver, Washington uh, measuring points. However, as of present, it is still, though gradually dropping, but uh, it's still, but it's still going down and is only at about 20,000 cubic feet per second. That's, that's still, you know, a massive water flow. However, again, that's, that's a huge chunk below where it should be. Now, moving east out to Utah, Salt Lake City, uh, plus the surrounding area, basically where almost the entirety of Utah's population is, draws its water out of a number of minor streams and rivers. One of them is Little Cottonwood Creek, which at this time of year is normally between 170 uh, cubic feet per second of water flow and uh, presently is all the way down in the single digits. Uh, the, last I, the last I looked, it was at four. Uh, the Jordan River, no, not the real one, the one in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, the fake Jordan River is normally at this time of year at about 140 cubic feet of water per second and uh, is doing better than the others, but it's still below its normal range. It's down at only about 130. Red Butt Creek, or Red Boot Creek, however you're supposed to pronounce the uh, U with the two T's and the E after it, is percentage measured, and and it is almost 80% down uh, below its normal flow rate, uh, presently at 79% down. And the Pine View Reservoir up in the mountains uh, to the east of Salt Lake City area, if it were full, would be at about 4,900 uh, feet of elevation water level, empty at 4,819. And uh, normally it, it is pretty close to full, and uh, when it loses water level, it does uh, refill. However, it uh, has been dropping rather rapidly. And as of present, uh, this year so far, it's already dropped down to uh, 4,876 elevation feet. And to round things off, uh, going down to the south to the Rio Grande River at its first major measuring point uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Normally at this time of year, it would be uh, fluctuating between uh, 1,200 and 2,000 cubic feet per second. And uh, presently, it is much, much lower than that. It is all the way down at only 350 cubic feet per second. And uh, throwing in also one of its tributaries from the U.S. side at least, uh, the Pecos River that flows uh, through New Mexico and a bit of Texas before emptying into the Rio Grande River. Uh, the Pecos River, the Pecos River normally at the uh, measuring points up in New Mexico at least is at about... Uh, is in the upper 100s, close to 200 cubic feet per second at this time of year. However, it is uh, presently all the way down at only 70 cubic feet per second. So, no, the situation for the western U.S. is not good. And as of the uh, present and long-term outlooks, it is not going to be getting better. So follow usually the, uh, the general lines of advice. Firstly, uh, don't live in the middle of a desert. Secondly, uh, particularly for California's case, don't cram 40 million people into a single state. And thirdly, if you're out there in that uh, general area, especially California, but uh, if you're out there in that general area, at least if you can, get out. All right, so that's our summation of the uh, Western U.S. critical drought situation with eminent shortages and water usage restrictions. But that is it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Uh, like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new or anything, also do energy and mining and resources and stuff. There's some videos up on the screen you can go watch. And there's also several hundred others on the channel you can look through. PayPal and Patreon links are both down there if anybody wants to support me. 
But that's it for me for this time, so may God bless and protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.